friends. This project that I'm doing, I'm using steam bending, and uh, to do this, I want to share with you the fundamentals of steam bending. Okay, um, first of all, when you're steam bending wood, you need three considerations, three basic considerations. First of all, the wood you have to get the cell structure uh, into a condition that's called plasticized. Uh, there is a substance that's called lignin that is kind of like a glue, if you want to think of it that way, that holds the cells, the wood cells together, it, it bonds them together. You need to have this plasticized so that it can be moved. And that allows you to, to move the uh, cells uh, so that they can uh, cross or compress uh, across each other. And then, to be successful, you need to have a, a wood that is green or air-dried. And ideally, you need to have about a 25% moisture content in the wood. If the wood was uh, kiln-dried, the process of kiln-drying with the heating and drying, it'll get the wood down to 8 or below, 8% uh, or below, um, but it kind of locks the cell structure and it won't allow this lignin to uh, plasticize again. It'll stay locked and you won't have success with kiln dried wood. Okay, then the third consideration is you need the wood to be under compression uh, while it's in the bending process. The type of woods uh, that exist, first of all the exotic woods, they don't bend well. So don't even, uh, I don't even think you should uh, try that. Then, of course, softwoods, they don't bend well either. Uh, you can do them. I've seen people bending large structures for uh, arches, uh, but there's, it's hard. It's, you won't have a lot of success with that. So that leaves us with hardwoods. Hardwoods are good, and the different woods uh, have different characteristics in the bending also. Okay, uh, you can gauge uh, how easy the wood can bend by the smallest radius that you can, it can form without breaking. So here we're using a one inch thick uh, piece of wood uh, as the study. And you can see here the oak, hickory, and elm, they will bend to a two inch radius. Uh, then following that would be walnut with a three inch radius, ash, four and a half inch, cherry, six inch radius, and cherry is prone to compression wrinkles. And what that is, is when you're making this arch bend on the inside, uh, the wood compression, compressing, and it's uh, pushing against each other, and it's causing these ripples, or a compression wrinkle is what it's called. And then the lastly is the maple. This is one of the more difficult hardwoods to bend and you may need to have leverage. It needs a lot more force and the smallest uh, radius with that is eight inches. Okay, then the wood, when you're prepping it for the bend, uh, you want to try to choose a straight grain wood and a runoff of no less than 15 inches or run out no less than 15 inches. And what run out is is when you're following the grain and it comes to an end where it comes off the edge of the wood. That's a run out. So you need to have fairly straight grain with, without that run out. And then avoid knots and whatever imperfections and any of the irregularities that you may have because no wood is going to be perfectly straight. You want to put those irregularities up against your metal strapping which is the backing. This keeps that edge of the wood from uh, stretching. So, uh, and there will be no compression, so almost no movement at the edge uh, where the metal backing is. After you make the bend, you need to leave it in your form, your bending form, for about 20 to 40 minutes before you move it. If you move it too soon, it's going to want to uh, spring right back. So you have to leave that in there so all the cells will push and that lignin will uh, then lock, lock the cells into that shape. After you move it from 
your form, you have to move it to a drying rack. Okay, you keep it in the drying rack for about five to seven days. And the first uh, 12 hours when it's on the rack, you should, if it's like oak, oak has a tendency to cause surface checking if it dries too quick. You have a rapid drying on the exterior surface of that piece of wood. So you want to cover it with a piece of fabric for the first 12 hours to slow up that surface drying action. After that, remove the, the uh, fabric and then leave it set in that rack in that form. Uh, that will hold it into that shape for five to seven days. Then it should be permanently locked into that shape. <clears throat> okay, th this is a, a, a edge view or side view of a piece of wood that you're going to bend. This top piece here, and, and we're dealing with uh, usually like maybe an inch. When you're uh, steam bending, you need to leave the wood in your steam uh, environment. Uh, it, the time for this is uh, one hour for every inch in thickness. So uh, looking at this piece of wood, if you had this steamed and ready to bend, when you start bending, pushing force down on this, uh, this top area is going to want to stretch. This bottom area will go into a compression action. Okay, there's a center line right here that would be considered a neutral area where there's no movement of the cells. What we need to do is get this uh, neutral zone pushed up to the very top to minimize the amount of stretching that can happen. Stretching is where you're going to have the failure. It's, it, the wood fibers are going to tear apart and break. It'll start to break on that top part. And in stretching, uh, you'll have breakage between a half and one percent of stretch and then it's going to start to break. To stop that you take and clamp both ends of the piece of wood that you're working with clamp a metal strap on that one surface. Now when you bend the metal is going to lock this surface so there's no movement, there's no stretching at the top. Then all the wood underneath will be in a compression mode. So this is the way you want to design your bending jigs so that you have all compression and minimal stretching action. Okay, let's go and look and see how we do it. I'm using a piece of 12 inch PVC conduit or plastic pipe to be used as my form for the drum hoop. And I cut it at three and a half inches in length and using a piece of 2 by 4 through the center to use as a clamp down support and to support my uh, metal strap that I'll be attaching uh, for the one end of the hoop. When I drilled the holes I countersunk the holes so that I can come around the form and there won't be screw heads uh, that would be in the way of the wood uh, when it makes its complete circle around the uh, hoop form. I cut a birch strip 3 8 inch thick, 3 inches wide, 4 foot long and have it in my heat or steam box. And at 3 8 inch that's approximately 30 minutes of bathing or uh, sitting in there uh, to properly heat. Here you see I have the end of the wood uh, tapered. I used a hand plane, tapered the end, and I'm jamming that into the edge of the form. This will keep that end from uh, moving. The far end I'm clamping a C-clamp so that uh, the piece of wood can't slide underneath the sheet of metal so that there's no stretching on the outer surface of the piece of wood that I'm bending the hoop on. There's not a lot of time to do the bending from the time you pull it out of the heat box until you complete the bend. So notice uh, I'm trying to bend as quickly as I can but it has to be a slow movement process. 
Uh, notice the speed at which I'm going. Uh, this is about the right speed. I run into a problem here at the end. I put the clamps on in the wrong direction. You'll see here in a moment. Um, so when I get to the end of the bend, I got to loosen my clamps and shift them the other direction so that I have more clearance. Right here, you see right as I'm pulling, the clamps are in the way. So a little forethought before you make, make those bends. Once I get it bent, then I have to secure it to the form and leave it set there for quite a number of hours before I move it. If I had to uh, do more than one uh, in this situation, most likely I would have made more than one form and leave the form as it's curing racks. I'm doing an overkill on these clamps. Um, I probably only need clamping right at the very end. Uh, the form is holding pretty close all the way around. Um, and it, in the use of it as a drum hoop, uh, you would never see any imper imperfection in the oval of the finished hoop. I'm allowing this hoop to set this way for about three days. Then I'm taking it off its form. And here you can see the overlap, how the wedge is. I'm going to have to trim the overlap and uh, um, sand it down to make a smooth uh, transition right at, at this uh, lap. The safest and easiest way to remove the excess wood is to run it on the bandsaw. And uh, the bandsaw leaves a rough edge. And here I'm using my belt sander. Of course, I have it upside down um, and clamp secured in my vise. And uh, the inside is being sanded smooth. I'm using a drum sander on my drill press. The edges inside and out are being over-rounded using my router table. After sanding the hoop smooth, I put a oil beeswax finish over it. Here you see uh, some other hoops that I made. This one I used dovetails to hold the joints together. There's a slight spring back and you can see my patterns for the uh, dovetail. Um, I attached the patterns, then cut them and uh, sought out the wooden shapes. Here is uh, black walnut dovetails being fitted, uh, glued into shape, and then sanded, and then a finish applied to this second hoop. Thanks for watching, my friends. Bye bye.